Hey everyone, Dave Jackson here, ESPN Rules Analyst on ESPN Hockey, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, here with Long Beach Lenny. Today's show is brought to you by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind for less than a buck a day. Maybe you got a ticket for speeding, texting, and driving. Maybe a DUI, or maybe you have to go to court and you're too scared to go. Maybe someone gave you a contract you don't understand. If any of those happen or a whole bunch more for less than a buck a day, Legal Shield can help. Call 213 245 1305. That's 213 245 1305 right now or go to nocourt.us. How about a round of applause for them? Also, a big welcome to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio and our NBC Sports affiliates from coast to coast. Lenny, what's cracking, buddy? I'll tell you what, everybody's cell has to take up that number on Legal Shield, especially coming up towards the, the New Year's uh, celebrations. They definitely got to keep that in their car because when, and hopefully they don't you know, misuse their uh, driving privileges when drinking, but if they do, they should have Legal Shield you know, in their phone set. Yes, I absolutely agree. I would absolutely. agree with that. I would also agree, Sal, that you and I are on opposite sides of the fence today. And it would deal with hockey as my Los Angeles Kings are hopefully going to kick the sticks out of your Las Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, knock it off, mister. The Golden Knights are the best team, statistically that is, in the Western Conference. Yes, they are the best team in the Western Conference. Live it, learn it, and love it. it. This is an amazing story. I mean, if people don't look at this, when you have an expansion team coming into any league, and I'm talking any league, you have expansion baseball, they're garbage. You have an expansion football team like the Cleveland Browns, they're garbage. When you have somebody that comes into the NBA, they are garbage. You have the Las Vegas Golden Knights coming in, and they're leading the Pacific Division, as I like calling it, the old school Smythe Division, over the Kings, San Jose, the Quacks, the Flames. I mean, we could go on. That That is a tough, hefty division, Sal. And for them to come in there and have a 24-9 and record, that is really something to, something to say. The Vegas Golden Knights are a great counterpunching team. This club is really good at working off the mistake of the aggressive other team. They collapse their defense in front of the goalie. They really know what they're, they're very well coached. They really know what they're doing without the puck. They move very well without the puck. You know, we hear about that in basketball. You're supposed to keep your feet moving, right? Well, the puck is only in one place at one time. And guess what? The balance of the team is rotating. They're covering one another. But offensively speaking, the Vegas Golden Knights are making the extra pass and they're making the opponent opponent goalies look like absolute blithering idiots. <laughs> now, I love the fact that they came off of a win over the Ducks last night, four to yeah. one. Yeah, I, I love that. Any time that you can put a skate and a stick in the in the Ducks' face, I love it. But Sal, look at their overall rankings in the NHL. I mean, goals per game, third overall, magnificent. Goals against, 14th. Power play percentage, 15th. Penalty kill percentage, 23rd. These are overall stats, Sal. So other than the goals per game, third. So now what do we have? We have a 14th middle of the road, 15th middle of the road, 23rd in penalty kill percentage, 23rd in the league. Not that great. So is Wait a this minute. something? What are they? What are they doing? That's okay. making a difference. What was the first stat you read? Goals, goals against. Per, goals per game. No, There's, goals per game. Or, or, is goals, that's right. Goals per game. 3.5. What they're doing is they are throwing everything at the net. 
everything offensively, and they're keeping the pressure off of their defense by keeping the puck in the offensive zone. That is what you're seeing. That is why this team is at the top of the Western Conference. It's not because they're great at anything, because they're very middle of the road, as you just read out of all the other stats. But what they do is they keep pressure and keep the puck in the offensive zone so the goalie doesn't have to make that many plays. That's why they're so successful. Okay, are they so successful now? Who, Sal, is in goal for the... uh Vegas Golden Knights these days. Well, Malcolm Subban and uh, what's his face? That guy that you like that I don't even like to say. We'll call, <laughs> we'll call him Malcolm de Fleury. But a lot of it is due to Malcolm Subban and the backups. It's not so much Flurry because they could do without Flurry. They, they, frankly, they should make a deal back with the Pittsburgh Penguins. They could pick up one of their centermen and they could pick up a defenseman. And they could swap the salaries. And let's face it, with the ups and downs of Murray, his health in, in between the pipes and Pittsburgh, that might not be a bad move. Because, you know, Pittsburgh is basically three points out of last place in their conference or in their division. Pittsburgh's really stinking the join up as the two-time Stanley Cup champion, the back-to-back. This club needs help between the pipes. And let's face it, Fleury already knows the team. Everybody knows him. They know how to play in front of him. They know where the rebounds are going to go. They know where he's soft. And I think it's a really good pickup if they go ahead and make a deal with Pittsburgh because they can pick up a quality centerman, which they need, and or, or maybe even a, a quality uh, left winger because I think they could use a left winger too. They're stacked up at right wing. But ultimately, they'll pick up a defenseman, too. And if they're going to make any kind of, which sounds ridiculous, any kind of a playoff run, yes, a playoff run, Vegas Knights in the same sentence, if they're going to, they're going to need to shore up the defense, and they're going to need an experienced winger as well, maybe a centerman. Okay, so now let's flip the script here, and let's look at the Los Angeles Kings. And that same stats there, okay, goals per game, 14th overall. Not very good, 29 Goals against, 2.3. First overall, not good. Power play percentage, 25th. And penalty kills percentage, first overall in, in the NHL. What does that tell you about the Kings? That tells me that they live and die by the shot. Well, okay, but you remember, look how the Kings are built in the first place. The Kings, and, I, and I've been saying it ever since you and I have been talking for how many years now, the Kings are a big and heavy team, right? They're big and heavy, and that's what they do. That is exactly what they do. So they are a true counterpunching team, right? Right. All right. So what we're talking about here is a team that is built for duration, Now, Colin Frazier, our NHL correspondent, three-time Stanley Cup champion, had said the same thing. The Kings are going to wear you down over a seven-game series. They're not going to go ahead and beat you up in one game. They're not a one-off team. So the Kings are a very tough team, just like Anaheim. They're very tough teams to play against in a seven-game set. That's why those two teams built themselves against one another. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But still, I, I'm look. I'm thinking tonight. I'm thinking tonight that we're gonna definitely have have some firepower coming at the Golden Knights. I think this is a night you have the two top div, uh, at the division. This is the night, Sal, that the Kings bring it. Put the sword back in the scabbard, there, Knights, because you're going nowhere. There it is, buddy. Let's get ready to rumble. And, right. and I think what we're going to see is we're going to see the Golden Knights come away with yet another victory over the L.A. Kings and stretch the lead. Yes, folks, you heard it here first. Watch out for the Vegas Golden Knights. I'll tell you what, buddy, lots of hockey coming up, and we have a special guest coming up in the next segment. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. And that's another thing. Those Dodger fans, Sal, I mean, sitting on their hands, they were not ferocious like the Boston faithful over there. What does that have to do with anything? 
That's the reason you had two out rallies, because you have fans that are behind them, and the Dodger fans are weak. No, a two out rally is predicated on what those hitters are doing at the plate. When you look at what the Boston Red Sox hitters were doing, they were shortening up the stroke, they were getting up on the bat, they were rotating the knuckles, they were doing all the right things to get around on everything and protect the plate. The Dodgers were still swinging for the fences even with two strike counts. They were not willing to hit the ball the other way for the most part. Even when the shift was on, hell, they could have laid down a little 99 hopper to third base if they're a left-handed stick, but they weren't doing it. The hitting mechanics and the hitting coaches are just simply better over in Boston, and they prepared their hitters to do the right thing. That's what made the difference with that two-out hitting. They shortened everything up, and they made contact. They put the ball in play. My favorite one had to do with the Green Bay Packers. And I love the fact that they dealt off Ty Montgomery because of a blown assignment. Green Bay isn't Green Bay unless they have a good running game. Then they can win 10 Super Bowls. The fact is, you don't have a running game. You've got 70% passing, and that's not where Aaron Rodgers needs to be. He needs to be in a position where he's got a running game to offset the passing game and so forth. I like the move. Green Bay didn't have a running game anyway, so all they're doing is saying, we're going to get rid of you because you don't follow instructions. Well, he made one of the most boneheaded plays I've ever seen. There's two minutes and five seconds on the clock. The coach tells him, take a knee in the end zone because we have one timeout, plus we'll have the two-minute warning. And for some reason, he runs it out of the end zone. He runs it 20 yards in. Yeah, donkey. Yeah, whatever that was. That's the guy. Yeah, that's a donkey or something from Godfather 3. Yeah, and he needed to be canned for that very reason. And so they dealt him off to the Paul of our Ravens. And now he'll get some playing time over there, which is good. But good news for Green Bay is they cut bait immediately. They said, you can't follow instructions. You can't be here. I'm shocked they didn't cut him on Monday. They traded him they on Tuesday. They should have cut him on Sunday he night. He shouldn't have been on the plane back to Green Bay. Right, they should have made him walk back yeah, to Green Bay. No, it was a terrible play. Now, he's not a stupid guy. He went to Stanford. Really? He's not a dumb guy. He's not a dumb guy, but he doesn't he, follow instructions. He made a terrible play. And even, listen, even if he got tackled and didn't fumble, it's a bad play. The fact is he didn't follow instructions. And you say he's not a dumb guy. Therefore, his own agenda he put ahead of his team. I agree. Thus, he is a dumb guy, right or wrong? Wrong. He just got selfish. You're not going to convince me that a guy from Stanford is a dumb dumb. No! (laughs) But I also like it that Green Bay made another trade. (laughs) Uh, yeah, this is uh, Sidney Justin from the Miracles. So you heard yesterday's show at Roy Firestone. Did you think you hear a little clip about him going into the office where Smokey was at? And that was really good material, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really funny, man. Yeah, and then you heard him. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It was cool, though. It was cool. Really cool story, man. I, I enjoyed listening to that. Right, and then he gave a little bit of a couple of bars. Can you give us a couple of more from Ooh, Baby, Baby? And let's see if you could do it better than Roy Firestone. You know what? Why not? Uh, I did you wrong. My heart went out to play. But in the game, I lost you. What a price to pay. Hey, I'm crying. How's that, man? That's Is incredible. that okay? Is that good enough? <laughs> that's incredible. That's fantastic. You know why? Because that's what you do. You're in the incredible business, Sid. That's awesome. Yes! <laughs> Only at the sports circus. You're going to get sports? You get music? We're really entertaining. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, of the Sports Circus, a primetime, nationally syndicated television, radio, sports, and entertainment show. The Sports Circus covers topics others are too scared to talk about. There's no other primetime show like it on here that'll punch you in the face and you'll beg for more. Join me, Hall of Famers, World Champions, and All-Star Celebrity Guests for Chaos and Controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, plus thesportscircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting.
Hey there, I'm country rock artist Susie Corey, and you're listening to The Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, here with Long Beach Lenny. This segment is brought to you by Black Diamond PR Firm, representing actors, athletes, authors, musicians, and small business since 2007. Everything you do is public relations. Black Diamond PR Firm, we are your people. Visit them at blackdiamondfirm.com or call 877-256-3075. That's 877-256-3075. And tell the circus sent you. About a round of applause for them. All right, a big welcome to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio and our NBC Sports affiliates from coast to coast. Hey, Letty, we've got a couple uh, special guests with us today. Yes, we do. We have a... Oh, I was going to say, that we do. And I want to make sure that both of them are on the line right now because, look, we're in a very fortunate position where we actually have brothers, two former NFL players, and we also have the lead singer and backup singer, background singer for the Miracles. Right now, I understand we have KJ or Carrie. Carrie Justin, you're with us, right? Yes, I'm here. All yeah, right, good. Hey, where, where's your brother? I'm right here. Oh, you're both there. We got you. Got we got both of you. Yes, sir. We're yes, both sir. here. Awesome. Okay, so folks, we have Sid Justin and Carrie Justin, otherwise known as KJ. How about a huge round of applause for the Miracles? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, guys, great to have you with us. Nice, nice Thank studio you. audience. That's awesome. So, Obviously, we've got a, a to talk about here, but before we jump in, I want each of you to take a, just a quick second and give some, give us, all the listening audience, your background. And Sid, why don't you start and then uh, pass it over to KJ. All right. Well, okay. All right. My name is Sid Justin. I, uh, everybody called me Steel, uh, but uh, I uh, played uh, football. I didn't play high school football at all, but I played uh, um, college football at Cal State Long Beach, and then I went on to play uh, in the NFL with the Rams and the Colts, played uh, up, uh, one year also up in uh, up in uh, Canada with the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, which was great. I loved it up there. Yeah, I loved being back down in the, in the NFL as well. I uh, ended up leaving uh, the NFL for, uh, due to an injury I had and uh, for, with my neck, and I got involved, back involved, I'll, I'll put it, with, uh, with music. Uh, I had already been involved with music uh, prior to uh, prior to going to the NFL. What I did was got involved with a group called Shalimar, uh, right out of uh, the NFL. I joined that group, was in the group for about six years, recorded uh, two albums, traveled around the world with that group. Then I started doing like soundtrack, movie soundtracks, I worked on several movie soundtracks. And then the Miracles contacted me and asked me if I was interested in joining the group, which was like 23 years ago, so I was able to say yes, and, and I've been doing it for 23 years, so, you know, Smokey Robinson, uh, you know, lead singer of the Miracles, if, if people out there don't don't realize that, but, yeah, with Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, and now it's just the Miracles, but uh, featuring myself, and I've been doing that for 23 years, like I said, it's been, it's been a while in the music business, I don't get I don't get too much contact on stage like the NFL, but... Uh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> I, Unless you have a rogue so, woman throwing her stuff at you, right? Yeah, well, that, I, said, I said not too much. So, yeah, you're right. It, it, it happens every now and then. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun being involved uh, in this music world. You know, I'd like to continue it. We, we're actually working on some new stuff, which I'll let, just talk to you about a little bit later on. Yeah, I'll let Terry go from there and, and give a little background on himself. You know, I want to try to keep keep with my with my what I'm saying short, so go on, KJ. Okay, yeah, I'm like Sid. Uh, never really played high school football. I had one year of junior college and one year of the university at Oregon State and uh, went on as a free agent to play with the Seattle Seahawks. Ended up being there for nine years. Also, I left there and went to the USFL for a couple of years until it folded and then came back to the Seahawks. So I was in the league total of 10 years, just been uh, out doing some sales and stuff like that. And my brother called me and recruited me to try out for the Miracles. 
and audition and uh, went out and auditioned and thought doing it and picked it up and here I am a background singer and also choreographer for the group and it's been awesome a great experience being represented by the kid and how he puts the things together and professionalism that he brings to the table it's been an awesome experience also representing the, the miracles as a legendary group uh, we won the hal award last year for all the uh, achievements and recognitions and stuff that we've done so it's been awesome and uh just looking forward to doing more and more Wow. Hey, Letty, imagine this. Imagine these guys going from the biggest stage in sports to an enormous <laughs> stage in music. What are the odds of that happening? You look at that and you say, how could that be? But you know, these guys know certain people. You look at Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. During the time that he was even in the NBA, he was with Foo Schnickens. You see somebody like Bernie Williams the center fielder of the New York Yankees and a world champion is a great blues guitarist. And then the late Wayman Tisdale was a great musician in his right too. So I, yep. I don't see anything different with these guys that, that, you know, that the, the football was one thing, but just over here, Sid said that he was, he was good with music before he played football. So he had that going on even prior to it. Is that right, Sid? Yeah, that, that's right. I, you know, you know, as a, as a young young guy in, in high school, I started singing. Is when I began my music, you know, vent, uh, adventure. But uh, I was able to, you know, in uh, in my college years, I was able to do a project uh, for a movie called Animal House, which was um, uh, uh, with John Belushi. Hey, hold hold that thought. Hey, how about a round of applause for Animal House? Everybody has seen it. <laughs> if you haven't seen yeah. it, you've been living under a rock. That's, that's true because right. you're right. Everyone, everyone knows Animal House, and uh, and so you know, I, I was able to be a part of that soundtrack. Uh, I'm singing on a, a song called Shout, and also oh, you got to give us some. Come that's on, man, great. you got to give you got to give us some. Don't don't leave us hanging here with nothing. Well, well, I'll put it this way: I didn't sing the lead on "Shout," but I was a part of the of that you know group that performed it. So, if you want to hear my part, it, it, it's a very small part. Absolutely. But uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, the, the the thing was, it was no one thought that that film was going to do anything. It really was kind of a B a B uh, rated type production, and no one actually felt that it was going to be something that uh, was going to be so successful. And, uh, and it turned out to be one of the biggest cult films uh, in history. So, so I, I think that uh, you know that was a, that was a very you know blessed opportunity for me to be involved in that, and I'm very thankful. You know, so yeah, I was involved with music prior to football, and and uh, or at least prior to, uh, to professional uh, football. Yes, I was involved in that. Mm -hmm. well, 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 but wait, wait a minute, Sal. Uh, for for those that don't know, now Sid, you you sang, and I have a little uh, a little uh, taste of it. The national anthem. You went and sang it over there at the Seahawks game for our listening audience here. Nice, man. Nice. What a huge round of applause for that. <laughs> yeah, do I get well, an applause? Come oh, on, man. There's the Kung Fu applause. <laughs> but you, but Sid, you realize, audience. listen to Sid, you realize that Shout is probably the collegiate national anthem. Uh, it's, right. it's played at every frat party. It's played at every house party. <laughs> it's played at every stadium when somebody scores or any any mayhem happens. You're a part of that bit of society and that national anthem as well. Yeah, you know what? I never thought of it that way, but you're, you're absolutely right. I totally agree. I, I, I never thought of it uh, as a national anthem, but, you know, everyone knows that song. <laughs> and it's been played in multiple venues, uh, sporting venues. Uh, Lakers, Clippers, Bit Bulls. I mean, everyone plays the song, you know, at some time or another. They they'll play that song throughout the season. So you're right. It is a it is a national. Anthem. 
agree. So, Sid, when we come back from break in a couple of minutes, you're going to go ahead and give us your part from Shout, right? Uh, uh, Pressure's on. Right now. <laughs> you want it right now? I can see you right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that was you. All right. That so now every me. time we hear that, we can say, hey, that's it. That's right. That's, that's, right. Right. that's, that's it. That's me. Wow. Yeah, the, uh, there's a guy, the, uh, the guy who actually sang it, his name was Lloyd Williams. And he, he actually sang the lead on it. And we were in the singing group together, and they uh, hired us to do the soundtrack. So he, you know, he was the lead singer and uh, at the time. Uh, and so, you know, he did the song, and both songs, actually. And we sang background, Shama Lama, Ding Dong, you know. I know you remember that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That's, yeah. So it, those were the two songs we, we sang for the soundtrack. And that was prior to, that was actually while I was playing football in, in college. When I did that, I'm, I'm glad I did it. I, you know, at first, you know, it was just fun. It was just a fun thing, really, to to do it. And you know, didn't didn't realize how popular the song would be or how important it is. Like you said, as a national anthem for sport. You know, it really is. It really is. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, listen, guys, when we come back, uh, KJ, I, I would want to hear more about, yeah. I, I understand, I understand that you're, uh, you're, you're maybe in the studio working on, uh, working on your own gigs here. And I want to hear about your first time on stage as well with the miracles. You're going to have to fill us okay. in on that just because, you know, it's, it's interesting yeah. story and folks, we're going to be back here. Oh, we've Lenny, we've got about 10 seconds. Go ahead and get us out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Sports Circus. We've got some miracle music happening on our show. So we'll be back after a few messages. Don't go anywhere. Ah, Tam Beach Point at the old ballpark, friends. Hi, pop fly. That one be a home run in a phone booth. I don't know what the big deal about Cracker Jack is. Did you ever go buy a pack of Cracker Jack thinking you'd get a prize and find no prize <laughs> in the box? Here's the pitch. That might not sound important to some people, but when, you, when you're a little kid, especially from a humble origin, and they cheat you out of a prize, there's a bouncing ball. Second baseman has a Barbary over the first. It's hard to think in laudatory terms of the product. <laughs> I think it there was an occasional box of Cracker Jacks that found no prizes for uh, the, the, the for the little Harry Carey many years ago. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> that boy went a box of Cracker Jack to me meant a lot of money. Here's a pitch bounce foul. That's the most asinine marketing I've ever heard of. One ball, one strike. These guys say, well, you, you sing about Cracker Jack. I said, did... I only sing it because it's in the song. Here's a pitch foul back. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, even to this day, some youngsters who buy a box of Cracker Jack don't find a prize in the box. One ball, two strikes, two out. Well, if you're going to talk about a congressman being crooked, here's a pitch foul out of play. Why not talk about commercial products that don't do what they represent to do? They told me when they hired me it was a temporary job. Born and raised in St. Louis, and you can imagine the, the Cardinals were my favorite team from the day I could remember. And all of a sudden, the miracle of life, I'm broadcasting card games. Yeah. I own the town. I've broadcast them for 25 years, and I thought they are going to give me a gold watch, and they gave me a pink slip. Then I went out to work for Charlie Finley for a year, and that's par for the course. Came to Chicago, and I was with the White Sox uh, 11 years, and I with the Cubs. Never missed a game, never missed a time at bat, never missed a half inning that I was supposed to do. You know, Chicago is such a marvelous city. Hey, we got some Chicago people here. You know, uh, you never succeed in this business until you've had the experience of working with a terrible hangover. <laughs> Not until you've been able to come through with flying colors under those circumstances can you consider yourself a professional. Lord knows I've had more than my share of hangover. There's a drive! Way back! It might be! It could be! And it is! Holy cow! This crowd is wild! 
I'm your ringmaster, Sal, of the Sports Circus. Join me and Hall of Fame world champion and all-star celebrity guest for chaos and controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms. Also, thesportscircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus, and we prove it every day. Greetings, everyone. This is John Deddy, drummer from Slayer, Anthrax, Testament, and Volbeat. You're listening to the Sports Circus. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, here at Long Beach Lenny. And yes, we have Sid Justin, lead singer of the Miracles. And we have KJ, Carrie Justin as well, also doing the background singing for the Miracles. And by the way, folks, yes, they're both NFL players as well. All right, folks, this segment is brought to you by Cali Vegas, helping people just like you create, host your very own TV multimedia talk show. Call Cali Vegas at 949 445 one 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 nine. That's nine four nine four four five one 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 nine. Cali Vegas can help you with everything you need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic every day and host your very own talk show. Call Cali Vegas nine four nine four four five one 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 nine or visit them at calivegas.com. That's C A L I Vegas dot com. Hey, and a big welcome to everybody listening in on iHeartRadio as well as our NBC Sports affiliates. All right, let's pick up where we left off. And I believe, Sid, you were going to – oh, no, you're already saying your part from the song. But maybe a little bit of <laughs> Shamalama Ding Dong. About, uh, what did you say? Say it again? What, hear you. what about a, a little Shamalama Ding Dong? Oh, man. <laughs> that, that don't even sound right coming to you, man. That's, yeah, a, that's okay, man. It's all right. <laughs> We, what we about, can't what about the miracles, Sal? How about something that he's doing something in a minute you know, from the miracles? Hold on, I'm on a roll. We'll get to that in just a second. We're going to ask KJ a question about his experience with the miracles, and then they could sing something from the miracles. There you go. Uh, okay. Pretty clever, huh? Yeah, that's so clever. K- K- KJ, go on and tell him a little bit about what's, what's up. Yeah, well, go ahead, KJ. My first time on stage. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the first time we did a concert, and you know, it was it wasn't like no little, like little bar, or a little, little thing. It, it was a huge thing. So it was like here we are on stage with about three thousand people. I ain't never done this before, and I'm like looking outside, saying, "Oh my God, how am I <laughs> gonna do this?" And I think I can remember this. Oh, this ain't nothing. It's just like playing football. You just don't have a helmet on. I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were. Ran out on stage and I just started doing it. And, uh, that, that was kind of a weird thing for me, but it was good. It turned out good. So now you've got nine years with the Miracles, KJ. In that nine yeah. years, what has been? Was that your most frightening experience? That was. Uh, that was pretty frightening uh, because you know I have never done it before, and it was it was just really uh, kind of intimidating. But I had the same butterflies that I get when I play football, so I, I knew what he was saying. So I was. I was able to go out there, but, you know, being a professional and if you're working hard and you're doing what you're supposed to do and you know your assignments and you know everything you're supposed to all you need is just go out there and just go ahead and relive it. So, basically, I took that approach, and that's how I got out there and uh, got through the show, and it was exciting. It was great. So, guys, let me ask you this, and, KJ, I want you to start with this. When you transitioned yeah. from the NFL into auditioning with your brother, what was your initial thought for after football? What did you think you were going to do after you finished your pro, your pro career? Well, I was already doing some uh, film stuff. like with I was an extra in a couple of uh, movies like Harry and the Hendersons and The Black Widow, and I was really trying to get into the uh, movie industry. Uh, I went up to uh, Canada because they were shooting a lot of sitcoms back there. Back then, uh, uh, 21 Jump Street, and I went in audition for that, and I didn't get it. And Johnny Depp, he, he, he came in as, as his role, and I said, man, I messed up. I should have just came in as somebody they was looking for, and that's how he got the role. Then I started kind of just sitting around with it. It didn't work out too well, so then that's when I just kind of went on to into sales. Got it. Got it. So, Sid, when you finished your football career, mm-hmm. what was the transition time from football 
into music full time as that was the path you were going to go on? When did you know that A, you're good enough and B, that you could actually sustain a career in music? Well, I actually, um, you know, after my injury, I, um, I, I was not quite healthy immediately after, you know, retiring. So I kind of took off for about a year and a half, and then I was offered, I was actually in that year and a half period, I was working with some writers that I had uh, initially grew up with. Uh, do you know uh, the Silvers, the group called the Silvers? Yeah. Beyond Silvers and the, and, and, and the is a family group. Uh, well, I, we were close friends and uh, had met Leon, and he had asked me about the Shalimar thing. He he actually had, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I, 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 I would tell you this. Let me tell you how I knew, okay? Let me tell you how I actually knew. Okay, so when I was when I was in high school, I told you I didn't, I didn't play high school football. So, But what I did do was I, I, I formed a singing group, and we performed in a lot of talent shows around the city of Los Angeles. And so what, basically what happened was one day, one show that we were doing uh, was at Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles, and and uh, I was on stage performing, and with the with the group, and uh, Ray Charles had came into the um, to, to the show. He lived not far from uh, the school. He lived in the the Baldwin Hills area, and so um, he came to the show while I was actually singing at the time. Uh, he thought he literally thought that. It, the Miracles performing. Dr. Mosey Robinson was on stage performing. And he asked, they told him, obviously, no, no, that's a student, and blah, 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 blah. He said he'd like to meet me. So he came backstage after our performance. We did, like, two songs. And we came off the stage, and he came backstage, and he met me, and and he told me, he gave me, he gave me a premonition, really. It was, it was more or less a prediction, because he said to me, you know, Smokey Robinson is leaving the Miracles. You should take this place. You know, I looked at him really kind of silly because I'm a kid. I grew up, I'm growing up in South Central L.A. I had no access to anything of that magnitude, and I just had no no real answer to come back to that. And that's basically what he said to me that I remembered distinctively. And he, we talked for a few minutes, not long at all, but I'll never forget him saying that to me. But it was nothing I can do about it because I had no access. He never he never offered any access, and 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 that was it for that time frame. So I felt at at that point that he, he must have thought or heard something in me that felt that I can go further in, into the music world as a vocalist, and so I pursued it even stronger after that, uh, and throughout college and so forth. Uh, like I said, I, I did Animal House soundtrack. I done several other projects, and I was getting more involved in writing. And then one day, when my, in my senior year in, in college, a, a guy by the name of uh, John Barnes called me and said, hey, listen, I think that uh, Billy Griffin is going to be leaving the Miracles. This is the trip. He said, I think Billy's going to be leaving the Miracles, and I think you ought to take Smokey's place, uh, not Smokey's place, Billy's place, uh, in the miracles, and and he gave me information on who to contact and so forth. John Barnes actually worked with Michael Jackson, uh, Quincy Jones, and all those you know big top notch people. John Barnes is a major, major arranger uh, in the business and had been for for years. And he grew up not far from where I live, and he actually contacted me and told me about it. I went, I went on the audition. I, I sang for Bobby Rogers, Ronnie White, and uh, Pete Moore in, at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And then a couple of days later, they called me back and said they wanted me to join the group. But in between that time, I had a workout for the ranch. They called me as well the same exact week. It was the same thing happening in, in that week. They called me and said they wanted to sign me. So I had a dilemma in order to figure out where, what, what was I going to do? Was I going to play football or was I going to continue with the music business? Well, what I decided to do was obviously play football. Wait, Sid, here's the thing. You come in here and you're, you're saying that, but look at this part. What we're hearing is you have a, an opportunity to have a tryout and a workout with the Rams or you have one of your boys come up to you and say, oh, hey, Sid, and see, I'm going to reword it. Hey, Sid, we want you to consider taking the place 
of the Mount Rushmore, one of the originating sounds of Motown and Barry Gordy. Oh yeah, that would be Smokey Robinson. That would be you, Sid. That's how that's how highly we think of you. I mean, when you put it in that perspective, you're thinking, man, I'm taking over for Smokey. I mean, you see that much in me to be able to mention me with Smokey. I mean, that that would be like whatever position you play a de- de- defensive back and stuff. Whoever the one of the greatest Hall of Famers that you could think of in the NFL for you to be compared to. So for you to step in, player, and you're just coming in and you're saying, "Man, I I went transitioned from Shalimar and and I took the face of Howard Hewitt. Then I went over to the Miracles, and I'm running the place over here with the Miracles, and I'm the face and the sound of the Miracles, man. I mean, see, I don't want you to just downplay this okay if i have to bring it up a notch i'm gonna do it because when you're when you're telling the story it's not enough okay it is just not enough and and you you know okay and well hold up ladies and gentlemen you know you're listening to the sports circus we are on here with sid justin yes with the legendary group the miracles we have uh carrie justin also known as k j on the line here as well and you you know that we've got to get some t- type of uh, baby baby or something out of you before we go to a break. Come on with it. <laughs> you, want, you want me to sing something right now? Just saying. Oh, yeah. Don't make me sing it. Okay, you sing it. <laughs> oh, I, I'd like to hear you sing it, really. Lenny does Elvis. Yeah, that'd, that'd be more exciting. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to hear you sing. I'll tell you what. I'll sing, I'll sing a track for my tears. I'll sing a little bit of track for my tears, okay? There you and go. you guys have to sing the background. How's that? All right. Is that a plan? All right, guys. That's a plan. Come on, guys. Are, are you guys ready? Yeah. People say I'm the light of the party because I tell a joke or two. Ooh. I'm dancing loud and party, baby, but deep inside I'm blue. Ooh. And a round of applause for that. That was great. How about a mega a round of applause for that? <laughs> well, I can, I can yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys the hey, you know, I got to be careful now. You guys might take my job. Hey, what happened to my background? I thought you guys were going to jump in. Oh, they did good, man. I heard them. They were doing good. They, they were coming out. They were throwing down. Oh, good. All right. Well, I couldn't hear him, so, you know, I didn't know. Thank you, guys. Know. Now, see, man, KJ, you got me on, on the background there. He heard me. All right. We're not playing around. You tell us you're going to sing the lead. We got you backed up on that. All right. <laughs> you guys are funny, man. Y'all are funny. <laughs> I, I was just going to a- ask you this because everybody, everybody says this. One of the hardest songs to sing is what I had just played a little riff of you doing the national anthem. I've sang that before too, but man, when you're in front of a football stadium and when you're with some of your boys that you maybe played with and you know, and you're on the spotlight there, what it, what is harder, Sid? Is it singing the national anthem with nothing behind you? No, what did you I, did, I couldn't hear the last thing you said. What, what's harder, the national anthem with nothing behind you, or getting up there and singing with your group? Oh, the national anthem, of course, man. It's very, very difficult because it's something that's unrehearsed. You really can't. You don't. You don't know what situation will be like. I mean, the truth is, when you're singing the national anthem, you, you have to wear earphones, head, you know, ear earplugs because of the echo. It's very difficult. It throws you off. So a lot of times when people are doing the national anthem, you know, they they usually have ear earplugs or earphones. I'm sorry, in in the ear because of the echo in the stadium. It's a very difficult, uh, and you can still hear it. It's not very easy. Uh, with, the, with, with singing on stage, it's rehearsed. Everything is basically rehearsed. We know what we're going to do. We know approximately everything that should take place, you know, unless, of course, there's some sort of malfunction equipment or something like that. But, wow. yeah, but the most part is uh, it's very difficult when it's just you, just your voice, and 80,000 people. Right. Well, you know what, guys? It's not like you're jumping out of the stage and, and singing Love Machine. 
<laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you, though, that's one of my favorites, man. I love that one. <laughs> you know, you're not by yourself, man. You, you, Billy Griffin wrote that song with uh, Pete Moore. By the way, I'd like to re- really acknowledge Pete Moore at this time. He, you know, he passed away a couple of weeks, yeah. unfortunately. He was one of the founding members of the Miracles and passed away. It was a very sad moment for all of us here with the Miracles and our, the Miracle and Motown family. Uh, it was a very sad, sad, sad moment. And I want to really acknowledge his, his participation. You know, actually, uh, three of the Miracles have now passed. Uh, Bobby Rogers, Pete Moore, and Ronnie White. Smokey is still, you know, still out there performing, doing his thing. Uh, Claudette Robinson, she's still as wonderful as ever and, and just a beautiful person. Uh, and also Billy Griffin, who took Smokey's place originally in, in the Miracles and, and did Love Machine. But I just really wanted to kind of acknowledge uh, Bobby. Well, hey, you know, guys, I understand that you're back in the studio and you're going to release some new material. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, that's the plan. I mean, we, we're definitely uh, working on uh, a new project. The, 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 we, we've been gathering new material. We're looking for possible distribution and label deals. We're not sure how we're going to actually do it, how we're going to actually put it all together. We, we're just looking for material right now. That's our the start is to get the material uh, that will fit in line with what we do and something that's fresher and newer, yet not outside the, the box of what the miracles, who the miracles are, but yet still uh, updated sound and material uh, for today's radio. You know, R&B is very difficult today. I mean, hip-hop is so strong. Uh, R- the R&B world is not as uh, popular, but we, we're looking to bring that to, to, the, to the forefront because uh, real music is very difficult to, to find nowadays, and uh, and real performances are very difficult to uh, to find uh, live, live, actual live performance. A lot of people think we're we're lip syncing most of the time in our concerts, but we're not. Mm-hmm. Everything, right? is, everything, is, everything is all live music, live vocals, completely uh, a live performance. You know, so no sequencing right. or anything like that. And, so, and- guys, here here's an idea. You know, I happen to be from a place on the west side of Chicago where house music was born. And I, I grew up with those guys, and those are my friends, the creators of the sound. You know what I'd love to hear? I'd love to hear some of the older tracks and some of the new material maybe turned into a 12-inch. Get it out in the clubs and let the younger generation hear what you guys are doing with your new fresh material as well. Boy, that would be something, wouldn't it? I, would, I think that's a fantastic idea. It would be excellent to do that. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's exactly what we're gonna, we're, we would like to shoot for is something that's going to be you know, accepted in, in today's world of music at the same time and not lose the integrity of what the miracles and Motown music has brought to the to the world. You know, I mean we don't want to lose that, that flavor, but at the same time we have to stay up and that's what that's what our plan is. So maybe I can get together with your guys from the south side of Chicago. We can hook up something, do a little something stuff. That's something we could talk about offline for sure. I mean, those are people I've known for a very long time. I grew up with that. And it just happened to be that my cousin was the electrical engineer at the number one dance station in Chicago. That would be WBMX oh, wow. Park, Chicago, way back in the day. Oh, wow, that's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, that's, that's great, man. You know, the, I tell you what, man, people don't realize that a lot of people take music for granted. But music does a lot of good for people. It, it brings back memories. It brings back good feelings. It, it helps the sick. I mean, music is, is, is something that is God-given to us, and, and really, we take it for granted, I think. You know, I think we, as, as human beings, take music for granted. But I'll tell you what, I'm so thankful and, and blessed to be involved in a full-time music career, and I'm looking forward to actually doing a lot more, including um, <laughs> movie soundtracks. I still love doing those soundtrack uh, things, coming up with songs that, are, that fit a film. I like I like that idea of it, you know. And then the group, you know. The, uh, by the way, the, the miracles today is, is myself, KJ, Cordell Conway, and uh, a young man named Eric Wendell. Those we're the four guys that are mir- miracles today, and we uh, we have been performing all over the world. Uh, we actually, as, as I've mentioned to you early, Sal, you know, we have a really heart, a big heart for the veterans. For our veterans is why I sang the national anthem at, at the Rams game two weeks ago, I think it was. So I came down to yeah. think it was Veterans, Veterans Day, uh, the game against the Texans where the Rams just crushed them. Um, and uh, so I went, down, I went down there to sing the National Anthem for that. It was special to me because it was Veterans Day. And we've been working with the VA out of, out of Washington, D.C. Uh, we travel all around the country 
uh, doing free concerts for veterans. We were actually in San Diego uh, last year, I think it was last year, at the Humphreys by the Bay or something like that. I don't know if you've ever been there, but right. it's, a re- it's a really nice venue. It was really nice. We went to go see all the, you know, we went to see veterans that are in hospitals and, and, and just visiting and signing autographs and doing whatever we can to cheer them up. And the, the, the concerts have been really, really extraordinary. Uh, and I had mentioned to you earlier that probably like 30% of the people, veterans that have come to the concerts have never been to a concert before, ever. And that, that was that blows our mind to know to think that you know what I mean, but it's true you know. And I think that I think we should really look at our veterans as heroes. It doesn't matter if they yes. have a purple heart or nothing, nothing like that. It doesn't matter if they got a purple heart or they got a medal. No, they're heroes because they have fought for our freedom. You know those. How about a round of applause for them? Yeah, yeah. But you, you know, you know what? We 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 got to get something with the Justin brothers right here, right now. We have to know some Super Bowl picks coming into the playoffs here. We're going to start with you, KJ. What are your two teams you're predicting to go to the Super Bowl? Well, I'm predicting the the Los Angeles Rams and the uh, San Diego, I mean, Los Angeles Chargers. I keep getting those guys. So it's an all-L.A. Super Bowl. That's what I'm thinking. And I think the Chargers are going to pull it out. Yes. Yes. They're going to make it happen. All right, Sid. Who who are your uh, picks for the Super Bowl? Well, you know, you know, I agree with the Rams uh, prediction. I, I think the Rams are definitely they they're on a on a run right now. They look good. They seem like they're you know have that fire. And so I'm going to go with the NFC. Go go with the Rams. And on the AFC, I'm a little bit torn between several teams, and, and I just can't pick one just yet. But uh, gotta pick one. Uh, you're on. You're facing the fire <laughs> right now. I got a question. If I'm I got gonna, a question okay, for you right afterwards. Pick, pick one. If I'm going to pick one, I'm going to pick the Patriots. All right. Well, that's an easy, safe pick to pick. That's that's fine. I'm all right with that. <laughs> exactly. Hey. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, hey guys, we we'll, we only have about uh, maybe a couple of minutes left. I want to find out what causes your pushing, what your interests are. Tell us what the agenda is for you, KJ, for you, Sid, and for the miracles. And about your interests, real quick. My interest, as far as uh, what we're doing, like Sid mentioned earlier, with the, our veterans. You know, I like see us do a little more of that and once we get this album completed that we can go out and farm and bring love and peace and harmony to all americans that way you know music will change lives and that's that's just my interest of what's going on in the world today yeah you know uh, and, and as far as as far as my interest you know uh, we have a uh, 501c3 a charity called miracles for heroes that we've just started and what, what it is is an organization that that wants to help homeless veterans get off the street we are doing right now we're, we're trying to put together a, an agenda to get the homeless veterans uh, into housing some kind of way because uh, it's very uh, my wife and i we go downtown and we've, we've done this while i was in la i mean we, we, we've been really really supportive in trying mm-hmm. to help the homeless period not just veterans but just homeless people and it's very very heart heartening to see people on the street like that and and so we decided to put something together that will really help. Star has a, a, an initiative that they've done where they were able to uh, 85% of the homeless people off the street. And we want wow. to do that. Hey, so, know, and, Sid, how can people find out about your 501? Uh, they can go to, uh, to, uh, they can go to uh, miraclesforheroes.org. And they can also go to themiraclesmusic.com for our website. And there's some information on there as well. But miraclesforheroes.org is the charitable organization that, that we're going to be utilizing for the, the, the homeless uh, housing. That's wonderful. Hey, guys, listen, we're going to have to wrap this one up. Really appreciate Sid and Carrie Justin. Yes, they are two of the key members for the Miracles. We have the lead singer. We have backgrounds. We also have choreography from KJ as well. Guys, thanks for joining us. And it's always a pleasure. Of course, we want you back on. And of, of course, for Sid and for Carrie and for Long Beach Lenny, our co-host, I'm your remaster, Sal. Folks, thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow right here on your favorite station over our NBC Sports affiliates and iHeartRadio. We have a lot more coming up. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening, everyone. The Sports World. It's a circus. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas. You know, score.
put the ball down, give it to the referee. You know, and I don't even care if you slam it down, but you don't have to dance. You don't have to call your mom on the phone. You don't have to go. <laughs> the Sports Circus is a one hour primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC News, and CNBC radio affiliates, plus Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Well Cable TV affiliates across North America and nationwide in upscale hotels and resorts on hotel television in all 210 Nielsen rated markets. Just like a circus. My life is just a party and parties weren't meant to last. Dickerson. Jason Hooks, our player from Five Finger Death Punch. Sidney Justin from The Miracles. My name is Curtis Blow. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way to dribble up and down the court. I'm here on the sports The Sports Circus brings top sports and entertainment content and is delivered fully produced and is easy pass-through traffic for radio stations. Simply drop the program in your traffic manager and the full 59-minute, 50-second file will coordinate with the clock. Your local station receives up to four minutes of local avails during the Sports Circus broadcast and it's a great lead to live sports and entertainment. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked... Why not talk about commercial products who don't do what they represent to do? Yes! Big Billy here. He certainly knows something about making things difficult on the God, competition. He's a punisher. Yeah, he just break the ribs. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, I still haven't broke someone's collarbone yet in a boxing match. That's a great statement. I, I, I have not broke someone's collarbone in the ring yet. I've never heard that before. Yeah, I'm not. I can't is wait. there a reason you said he in says the I ring? Can't wait. Is it that you've broken collarbones just outside of the ring? No, the well, so yeah, you did catch that, that, right? He said in the ring. Yeah, exactly. So like, he got him on the curtain. He got him on the edge of the ring and broke yeah. his collarbone. Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circuit. I had to get Sal's name right. <laughs> well, that yeah, never, Sal, that's that's Sal never floor sweeper. That's his new name. Sal the bookkeeper. <laughs> yeah, hey, but, but even my name, even my so last name. Add that one to the bank, you know? But no, Alicia, you even got my last name wrong. That's well, why I, I said my name. I know it starts with bleeding. a V. It starts with a V. He said a V. Really? <laughs> Where's the punch sound? You know, 400 punches. <laughs> Here's the punch sound. <laughs> right. Exactly. Here's a real, look, he almost knocked out the microphone. <laughs> Alicia, that, that's why they have cue cards, baby. That's what that's, you know, So don't, don't let the name bother you. Just just bring a cue card with you next yeah, time. Yeah, but people can't read my name off a cue card. Or change your name to Joe Smith or something. Jeez, make it easy. Yeah. <laughs> this is Sal Tuzzolino, host and remaster of the Sports Circus. Why listen to the same old dog and pony show that you've heard all day long? The Sports Circus covers everything that other shows don't or are too scared to cover. There's no primetime show like it on air that'll punch you in the mouth. <laughs> And you'll beg for more. <laughs> also, you could call in and participate with our chaos if you dare. Join me and celebrity guests for Havoc and Mayhem. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. I want to try to instill some of this winning environment for this particular team. What's been your experience? Kevin, we're going to start with you. What was your experience going from Team A to Team B and bringing that Super Bowl experience to the next team? You know, they were kind of getting on me, wanting me to chill out a little bit, not play a game on a Wednesday and Thursday. But I always felt that, you know, you got to play at game day speed on Wednesday and Thursday so that you're instinctive and you can play on game day speed on game day. The Sports Circus is received well on all radio formats and is currently aired on sports, news, and music stations. Andre Reed, Mario Andretti, Herschel Walker, Roy Firestone, Mike Hayne, Jim Jeffco, Rod Jaworski, Al Bubba Baker. Brett Saberhagen. It's a circus and we prove it every day. Aaron Fink. Breaking Benjamin. Jason Hartlett. Drummer for rock legend Ted Nugent. Matt Starr. Drummer for East Fraley from Kiss. Phil Buckman. The bass player in the rock band Fuel. Hey, brother. Hey, we know quality content is hard to find, so if you're ready to have the Sports Circus in your market, give us a call right now at 714-948-0100. That's 714-948-0100. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time right here on your favorite station. Until then, so long, everyone. That's ridiculous. Oh, Norman. Don't call me Norman. Call me Chubsy Ubsy.